First, we want to take a look at the process for overhead, the process of recording overhead, the process of allocating overhead to jobs, it being a bit more complex than the allocation of direct labor and direct materials. First, we're going to set up a predetermined overhead rate. We'll talk more about the process for doing that, but this predetermined overhead rate will help us to assign what's in overhead to particular jobs. It'll help us move from overhead to particular jobs. We need to do it at the beginning of the process so that we can then use it in order to allocate overhead to jobs as we go through the current time period. We're then going to record actual overhead, actual overhead that we have during the process. Remember what actual overhead is. It's going to be the cost of anything that we can't apply to a job. So anything related to the manufacturing process that we cannot apply directly to a job, indirect materials, indirect labor, anything related to the warehouse that, warehouse that we can't apply directly to a job like depreciation, like, like utilities on the warehouse, then we're going to put that into overhead. Then we're going to apply estimated overhead to specific jobs. Now note that these two may not be going in order. In other words, as we go through a time period, we're going to be incurring overhead as we go, meaning we're going to be paying for stuff. We're going to be paying the utility bill in the factory. We're going to be paying employees that are indirect employees that we can't apply to a particular job as we go. And we're also going to be applying the estimated overhead to jobs as we go. So this, we may apply overhead to a job before we record all the overhead for a time period. If we're talking about a month, then we may be applying some overhead to the job, of course, before all the overhead is recorded because the month isn't over. We're going to be incurring overhead through the entire process. We're going to be applying overhead through the entire process. What we want to do is set up the predetermined overhead rate so that whenever we need to apply, we can do so. And that is not necessarily dependent on whether we have uh, recorded, you know, the actual overhead or all of it for a certain time period. And then we're going to have to adjust the over or under applied overhead. So as we'll see the estimate, this is going to be an estimate for us to apply the overhead to the jobs. It's not going to match our actual amount in overhead, the actual cost that we have. And therefore we will have a difference, which will be under or over applied, which we'll have to do something with. Uh, just to, to deal with that estimate at the end of the time period. So here's going to be the process that we will go through. So first, let's think about uh, the costs that we'll be dealing with. And note, I'm going to do this a little bit out of order because the costs that we deal with are going to be recorded and the actual costs will go together. And although we do this at the beginning, it's going to be applied directly to this process, us applying out the overhead. So first, I'm going to think about the actual costs because that's probably how you would think about how we would think about what would happen in terms of a GL account. We're going to have costs that will be incurred. We need to then allocate those costs to particular jobs. First, we'll think about materials. Now we're considering here the indirect materials. We've already looked at this at a prior presentation, but we want to just recap it here so that we know that here as we focus in on the overhead component, we see it here as well. When we think about the materials leaving uh, the materials account, and going somewhere else, somewhere to, towards production. Once we start working on stuff, you would think we want to apply it to a particular job. And this is going to be direct materials, things that we said, hey, we want, you know, this wood if we're making guitars and we want to apply it to this particular job. And that's why. But if we have other materials, such as indirect materials like glue or something like that, that we're just going to take the, we're just going to say, hey, the warehouse needs more glue. So all the, so we can work on more guitars. Then we're just going to put that in the middle of the warehouse. And we're not going to assign it to to all these guitars. We don't know which one, which job it's going to be working on. So this account then is going to be indirect. So remember, we could have two accounts up here, raw materials. We might try to track them differently. We might try to track the direct materials and then have another account for indirect. Or we might just group them all into raw materials. And then once we take them out, we reduce raw materials as we'll do here. And we'll record the ones that we cannot assign to a particular job. We don't have a requisition form. It's just a request from the warehouse in general or from the from the uh, production department, the factory in general, then we'll apply to overhead. So it'll look something like this. We'll say that the factory overhead is what we're going to apply to. And then uh, the raw materials is going down. So raw materials will be decreased, but we're not putting into work in process because we don't know which job. Therefore, it has to go into the factory overhead. So it'll look like this. We're focusing on this journal entry. Factory overhead is increasing, going from zero up by 550 to 550. 
and the other side is bringing down raw materials, which was at uh, 147.770 down by the, the 552, 147.220. So that's this account and this account. We moved it for raw materials not to work in process yet. We didn't know which job. We had to move it first to the factory overhead. We're starting to build up this account. And that's why I'm doing this first. We can see what's actually in there and then we'll apply it out. So we're going to say, okay, now there's 550 in there. I want it. Where do we want it eventually? We want to eventually put it there. I just don't know how because we cannot do that until we know which job to assign it to. So then we, the same thing was with direct labor. We already recorded this, but I just want to record it again just so we know where it is in terms of the overhead. So direct labor, if we're applying the timesheets, these are all timesheets that people that work in the warehouse and work in the production, in the factory. Uh, but th we, these we can apply to a particular job. This is stuff that's in payroll that we could not apply to a particular job. So it's like the supervisor salary, the maintenance, anything that's in there that's not working on a particular guitar in our case. We don't know which person, which guitar to apply it to. It's going to apply to some of them, but we don't know which. So if we could apply them, this is part of the payroll that we applied up here we're focusing in on this item that we cannot apply and that's going to be going into factory overhead and credit wages payable so again this is like a payroll this is like the payroll journal entry you know we're paying someone payroll we're not dealing with all the all the other withholdings and whatnot here we're just going to say this is straight uh, a simplified payroll journal entry we're going to credit wages payable you can think of cash if we were crediting cash we're paying somebody and we're debiting factory overhead because they worked on the guitars, they worked on the jobs, but we don't know which ones. We couldn't put it in the work in process. So that brings us to this point. Now we have 1,750 and you can, and you can note as we build up this factory overhead account, uh, we don't exactly know what it's comprised of. It's comprised of all these different things. Now we've got some indirect materials and some indirect uh, labor that we are putting into this account. Eventually we want it to go into work in process again, but we don't know uh, which job to apply it to and that's going to be our problem we'll have to deal with then we're going to have all the other stuff all the other stuff that is going to be included in the production of inventory that we don't know exactly which job it goes to 